you to go ahead and put your heads on your tables, close your eyes, and just relax. I'm going to tell you a story. So imagine you're at the beach, you're laying in the sand, enjoying the sun, it's the perfect weather, you can hear the waves crashing, you see a dolphin swim by. What happened? Why'd you all jump? Did you learn how to do that? You just did it automatically, right? This is called an instinct. Can everyone say instinct with me? All right, very good. An instinct is a behavior that is based on automatic reactions. Now I want you to turn to your partner, turn to your group and your table, and go ahead and smile. Who at your table has dimples? Did you learn how to have dimples? If I push on my cheeks like this for a while, can I get dimples too? So where'd you get dimples from? Right, so you probably got it from your parents or someone else in your family. This is called an inherited trait. Can everyone say inherited trait with me? Inherited traits are characteristics that are passed down from parent to offspring. Now we're going to go over this traits flow chart. So here you have, you see you have inherited traits that can be a behavioral or structural. We also have learned behaviors. All right, so dimples, if that's an inherited trait that you got from your parents, would that be an inherited behavioral trait or an inherited structural trait? Right, so it would be an inherited structural trait. Now what about the jumping, whenever you got scared when I hit the, the table with the lid? Right, so that would be an inherited behavioral trait because it's an instinct. Now everyone read this, what does this one say with me? Right, that says inherited trait. So how'd you learn how to read? How'd you know what that said? Exactly, so that is a learned behavior. So we're gonna add that to our chart as well. All right, so now we're gonna learn all about more inherited traits and learned behaviors, and we'll be able to answer our question of the day, which is, how do learned behaviors and inherited traits help organisms survive in their environment? All right, now before we move on, we're gonna go over some roles. So the first role is going to be be safe. So we're going to be dealing with some Legos today. Remember, they're tools, not toys, so we're going to be safe whenever we're playing with them. We're also going to listen and wait whenever we give our hook and horn sign. And the last rule is that we're going to think like scientists. All right, so now we're going to go out and pass out some worksheets and your job cards. Remember, you should have a different job than you did last week. Alright, we're also going to pass out your materials next. Materials managers, I want you to each give each person in your group one of these model foxes. Now, each of you are going to have your own fox, and they might be different from the person across from you or beside you, but your fox is going to represent a population of people. So how many foxes is your one fox going to represent? Right, so a whole population, so many, many foxes. Since we don't have enough Legos, we can't have each person that has a hundred foxes, so we're going to act like this is one population of foxes. Now on your worksheets, I want you to go out and take a few minutes and look at your fox and write down some different characteristics that it has. Also, be sure to compare it to the other foxes that are in your group, the other populations of foxes that are in your group. Alright, now that you've written some characteristics about your fox on your worksheets, I want you to think about which fox based on the foxes that are at your table and their populations would survive best in the Austin environment. So think about the temperature and the weather. Think about the everyday, the hills, and the everyday outside environment that is Austin area. And be sure to record that on your worksheets. So now that you picked the fox that would survive best in the Austin environment, we're going to 
let our foxes reproduce. So they're going to have babies. So many, many years are going to pass on, and then your fox is going to have other foxes. So I'm going to give you extra Legos, and you're going to be able to make your foxes. So you can also decide if I have a fox that's a normal fox and a fox with a red tail, and they had two kids, one would probably get a red tail, one probably wouldn't. Same thing if you had a fox, a regular fox, and a fox with longer legs. If you had a fox with long legs and a red tail, you might get one fox out of maybe three that has long legs and a red tail. Now I'll give you a couple of minutes, I'll pass out some extra Legos, and you can go ahead and make at least one or two extra foxes of population. So remember, if this fox and this fox had babies, then they would have lots and lots of other foxes, because this is how many foxes? Right, this is a population of foxes, so is this one. All right, now that you have lots of populations of foxes at your table, we're gonna change the environment. And that's because the environment has changed over many, 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 many years. So the environment doesn't change overnight, and the animal doesn't change just because the environment changes. So now the environment is going to be extremely cold. So now what you to do on your worksheets is with the population of foxes that are at your table, decide which one would survive the best in an extremely cold environment. For example, if I had a fox, a fox and I had longer feet, would that help me? Or would shorter feet help me if there's lots of snow to walk through? Right, so longer feet would help me walk through the snow because my feet would sink so it would be easier if I had longer legs. So that would, that's one characteristic and example of how this would help me survive in a colder environment. So go ahead and discuss with your groups with the other types of uh, characteristics with the foxes at your table and fill in your worksheets. For the explain for this lesson, you'll go back to the question of the day, make sure the students do a lot of interaction with each other, and turn and talk method is used quite a bit. You also address many of the misconceptions that they might have with um, inherited traits and learned behaviors. For example, they might think that uh, putting on a jacket when you go outside is actually an adaptation um, that you've inherited, and that, but actually the adaptation is just a learned behavior that we do. Also, another thing is that students might think that an adaptation can happen overnight, so if a parent has an offspring, then the offspring will automatically, for instance, if it was a fox, if long uh, legs were favored, then the offspring would then turn out with longer legs. However, that's not necessarily true. Because they might think that the offspring has the adaptation, that's why we demonstrate each of the foxes as a whole population. For the explain, you will also pull up that chart again from the beginning and add any of the different characteristics from inherited traits and learned behaviors that you've done throughout the lesson. For the elaborate for this lesson, you'll apply it to their daily lives. So you'll start with waking up in the morning and then they'll make a list and then classify it as either inherit a trait or a learned behavior. And then comes the evaluate. So now I'm gonna pass out a few questions to, for you to answer on your own and to show us what you've learned today.